right now on Justice. He's fired! Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag? You say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. President Trump putting on a full court press against athletes who disrespect the flag and the White House. He's fired! The NFL in a frenzy. Michelle Malkin is here with reaction. Breaking tonight, politics and sports collide as President Trump is in a war of words with some of the biggest players in the NFL and NBA over their lack of respect for the flag and the White House. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. A packed show tonight with the latest developments in North Korea and Iran and President Trump's response to it all. But first, my opening statement. The biggest issue facing our country today is the tiptoeing in political correctness that has brought us to the brink of disaster in national security and sports. The question, do we have the fortitude, courage, and determination to stand up to those who threaten our values? Last night in Alabama, President Donald Trump did just that and took no prisoners on the sports issue and the NFL players who disrespect our flag. Last year, San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who, by the way, is without a team this year, began the protest by taking a knee during our Star Spangled Banner. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag? To say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! Total disrespect of our heritage. That's a total disrespect of everything that we stand for, okay? Everything that we stand for. The fallout was swift and certain. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell called the president's comments divisive, saying they demonstrated an unfortunate lack of respect for the NFL, our great game, and all of our players, that the president exhibits a failure to understand the overwhelming force for good our clubs and players represent in our communities. <laughs> Roger, force for good? Are you sure you want to get into this fight? Now, Roger, if my memory serves me correctly, your stance on some of the NFL play women they batter is somewhat problematic. Think Ray Rice, Josh Brown, and a neuropathologist examining the brains of 111 NFL players found 110 to have CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, the degenerative disease linked to repeated blows to the head. Instead of mouthing off how you are a force for good, Roger, maybe you ought to get ready to reveal damaging information when the lawsuits start. Think Aaron Hernandez. And according to USA Today, NFL player arrests are not only disproportionate to the general population, but the violence associated with these arrests is shocking. And I'm not even talking about the homicides. And Commissioner, instead of taking sides against the national anthem, maybe you ought to think about your stockholders, your investors. Even though the stock market, thanks to our President Trump, is at an all-time high, there is one area that is suffering greatly. Companies that broadcast, yes, the NFL games, they are all down. Do you think that just maybe there's a correlation between the NFL broadcasting stops, stock slump, the NFL TV ratings fall? as the protests by these bozos rise? Attendance is down at NFL games. Sunday night football viewership is down at least 7%. And I'm sure you know that as ESPN has become more political, it's had to lay off employees because of its low ratings. And 
NFL Players Assistant Executive Director D. Maurice Smith says no one should have to choose a job that forces them to surrender their, their rights. Says they have, quote, thoughtful discussions in your locker rooms and boardrooms. Hey, D. Maurice, the only people who choose a job that forces them to surrender their rights are cops, the ones who die protecting people they don't even know. And it's the same liberals who want to protect the constitutional right of people like Colin Kaepernick to symbolically reject America by taking a knee. They're the ones who were quick to criticize Tim Tebow for bending a knee to pray and thank God on the field. And just this evening, the Golden State Warriors are refusing to go to the White House, placing blame on the president, saying he's made it clear we're not invited. That's nonsense. President disinvited Steph Curry, not the team. My take? People watch sports to get away from day-to-day -day stress, work, illness, financial worries. We don't need to be reminded of the political divisions. And all of a sudden, football players are lovers of the Constitution and the First Amendment. You're all full of crap. And that includes running back LaShawn McCoy, who called the president a word that I can't even say. You want to kneel, sit, or raise your fist during the national anthem? You ought to go kneel in front of a guy who's lost his limbs fighting for you so that you can call the president names. And don't give me this crap that you guys want to support reform and stand up against social injustice. You tell me the last time you sat on a jury. You tell me the last time you joined a school board or fought for laws that help people you supposedly want to help. When's the last time you voted, wrote a letter to your legislator or congressional representative? You want to convince America that this is about social justice and the Constitution? Then maybe you ought to get off your butts and do something positive for the country that's allowed you to make a fortune. America's been incredibly good to every one of you from the time you displayed talent in sports as a youth. America's allowed you to shine and become financially prosperous. There are so many of you who make tens of millions of dollars. Why don't you get together and take care of the so-called social injustices instead of disrespecting our country, our nation, the country that has turned you into heroes while you train eight-year-olds who don't know any better to take a knee against America because they're taking their lead from all of you because they don't know any better. Shame on you. Shame on all of you, and shame on you too, Roger Goodell, for not showing that you love this country as much as the president does when you had the chance. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. Hashtag Judge Denny, and I'll even read some of your responses in a few minutes. Joining me now with reaction, conservative commentator, radio host, Michelle Malkin, investigations on CRTV.com. How are you, Michelle? Good. Amen, Judge. Amen. <laughs> Michelle, what is going on? Why is it that when the president finally says, you know what? America needs to respect who we are that the NFL, the commissioner, these guys all come out, and I'm not even convinced they know what they're, what they're objecting to. Yeah, well, you've got left-wing elites across entertainment and now infected in the sports world, Judge, uh, who are allergic to American sovereignty, and uh, they have not gotten over the election results. So what we're seeing are a rash and outbreak of tantrums on every playing field. And if they keep doubling down on stupid in, in these uh, sports professional um, boards, what's going to happen is that NFL is going to stand for not 
no longer, you know, no, fans are leaving, right? Um, no fans left. Right. Um, and you've got a, a playing field now uh, that is, has become noxious. It's a noxious fan of, of leftists. And as you point out, the numbers don't lie. I wrote a column about it this week uh, that includes the NFL. Viewership is down since uh, the beginning of uh, the opening season mm -hmm. by 13 percent. We're seeing drops in attendance. We're seeing uh, 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 drops everywhere in, in advertising as well. And, and, and that's because there's no business enterprise that's ever going to survive by insulting and trying crashing its own customer base. Well, and what's amazing is that I, I'm not convinced that these guys all agree or even know what they're prote protesting. It's like the, the, the women's march in Washington right after the inauguration. You know, we're not going to take it. We're not going to take this. Take what? What rights are being taken <laughs> away from you? I still haven't figured that one out of you. No. And of course, the phenomenon is virtue signaling. Uh, you have a few militants like Colin Kaepernick, who have been very well marinated and steeped in cultural Marxism from the time they were in high school or college. And then you have thoughtless joiners, lemmings, who go along uh, with their black power salutes, not understanding what they're embracing. Colin Kaepernick fully does. This is somebody who put cops depicted as pigs right. on socks that he wore on the field, who went around sporting Che Guevara t-shirts. He knows what he's doing. Okay. Um, but as you, as you say, what we need is, is, a, is an internal revolt among, there are many patriotic members of, of the NFL, but they unfortunately at this point seem to constitute a silent majority. You know what I found interesting? There, there was a, uh, a group of eight-year-olds, a, a team, where one of the kids asked, in, uh, asked about what happened in St. Louis, and, and long story short you know the uh, uh, the coach said it was okay for them if they wanted to take a knee during the national anthem now these kids they just turned at the age of seven to the age of reason these kids don't have the slightest idea why they're taking a knee they don't know the first thing about what happened in st. Louis the trial the criminal justice system I mean should there be some requirement at least in in, in grammar school that we do something about this well, if there were civic education and a solid grounding in the Constitution, we wouldn't see this happening. And instead, of course, we now have elected and former elected officials who are calling for tomorrow there to be a, some sort of national take a knee day. Uh, a lot of these people need to take a knee on a pew and pray <laughs> and reflect and adopt an attitude of gratitude, as you mentioned in your opening statement, Judge, an attitude of gratitude for the blessing of this country. For people who make an average of two million dollars a year, that is the average salary uh, in the NFL, to be carping and moaning and adopting a grievance mongering stand the way they do without the proper perspective uh, of history and our place in the, in the world, it is an absolute disgrace. Even more so, you have this former Democrat congresswoman from Maryland, Donna Edwards, who is now calling for all of these NFL players to take a knee to, quote, protest the white supremacy President Trump. All right. How dare these people? How Michelle dare these people Malkin, race bait for a living? Thank you so much.